hello guys welcome back to my channel we are continuing designing the items found in a commercial kitchen and uh, we did a layout and filled up with some items here and there and we are continuing with those items we started from the goods receiving area and uh, right now we are at pastry preparation area and at pastry we've already done this worktop we have done the extraction wood we are going to do today we are going to do a stand for the oven okay stand for the oven and our stand the size is 950 by 750 with a height of 650 right and uh, if i may pull a photo yes this let me zoom it a little bit this is a small oven as you can see and the stand that we are talking about this is the stand the one that you can see below here is the stand with the runners you get you take the, the trays with whatever it is that you're baking you slide them in here for them to cool okay so we are going to make that worktop it's a very simple drawing yeah like you've seen uh, it is uh, a top of 750 by 950 and there is this bend of 50 as usual 15 millimeter then it has a square hollow section legs and an under shelf and four runners so let us get right into it you open your solid works go to file new as usual then part click ok we are starting with the top so go to top plane new sketch send a rectangle like I normally tell you, there are so many different ways of doing these things. So you follow whichever you feel like suits you. This is 950. And uh, this side is 750. No much is involved in this. Go to sheet metal. And you go to base flange base flange the top is 1.5 millimeter the cave the bending allowance k factor and auto relief they are the same okay you are not changing anything then you go to edge flange you create that edge of 50 millimeter all around some people may want to do the back side being an upstand but in our case we ain't doing back uh, backsplash all bends would go in one direction and the the size of the bend is 50 millimeter then we do an edge flange of 15 millimeter edge flange edge flange edge flange and edge flange 15 millimeter click ok and that's about that you can go ahead and save it um, solidworks we are at pp3 create a new folder here and name it pp3 and open open the folder And this is part number one. We call it PP3 top. Save. Now you can save it also uh, if you are using CNC. And even if you are not using a CNC, you, you really would need... I don't know if you're using CNC go ahead and save it as DXF file DXF file save it include bent lines click OK you get 
get your flat button right if we may go to uh, if I open the DXF file we see what we got pp3 yes flat pattern now this is the DXF file and as you are aware if you're using CNC these bent lines you give them a different color or you offset them by two millimeters so that you may make a small cut there in fact you don't even need the bent lines here you don't need them the bending experts will tell you for something like this you don't need uh, you don't need the bent lines because the first bend will come at this point at that 45 uh, notch and this other you bend that then the other is at this corner and this corner that is where your tool will be then you do the bending there so you don't necessarily need a, a bending the bent lines here for the CNC cutting right so we continue now the top due to the weight of the oven you have to put another back in sheet this is 1.5 millimeter you need to put a back in plate here of you can do mild steel okay the reason why some people prefer doing mild steel uh, as i normally say it is you don't want to bury money yeah you don't kill money you put a, a stainless steel sheet under here you are killing money and stainless steel is quite expensive as compared to mild steel so there is no issue with putting a mild steel backing plate here and you stick it with macroplast so we are going to create the backing sheet backing uh, plate new part click ok then still we go to the top plane sketch center rectangle dimension it at the other one was 950 so you give it an allowance of about five millimeter 945 and from this side also 745 this is sheet metal base flange you can change this to millimeter or even 1.5 because 1.5 and the other 1.5 will make it three millimeter three millimeter is enough to bear any weight right then you create edge flanges this has only that kind of edge flange remember the other one was 50 so this you can do 35 or 30 again you don't want it to be to protrude right there you have your backing and save it as part number one a pp2 pp3 backing plate there you go like i said there is no much to be done in this so we create the leg new part and we go also to top plane new sketch center rectangle you create and this we are using square hollow section of 40 by 40 ideally it is always 38 you can do 40 by 40 but what we get in the market is right around 38 by 38 so 40 by 40 that's okay and the thickness the thickness of the leg can be 1.5 1.5 mil we are offsetting this by 1.5 but in the reverse direction click ok go to feature extrude extrude both direction mid plane and the size 
if you saw the height of the of the stand is 650 and this is plus grommets so we are going to minus 30 millimeter for the grommet and do 620 so the extrusion should be 620 there you go your leg is all set save it as part number two pp three sorry legs right now with those three parts we can go ahead and start our assembly and our assembly you open new drawing and open assembly the first part to bring in is the top then the backing and the legs so it's one two three and we start the mat mat the top part of the back end should be on the bottom part of the top coincident relationship right click then you extend the top and get the front plane extend also the back in mates with the front plane that's okay and the right plane of the back in and the right plane of the top click okay there you go your back in is right in there and that back in you stick it with macroplast and leave it overnight for it to set right other people normally don't leave it overnight they just stick it and give it a few hours i don't know how good it sets but what i know is you should leave it overnight now we have we are meeting the leg and uh, how did we do that let us do it all over again yes so we take this face mates with the inner face of the 15 millimeter bend where is that bend this one right click then this face and this inner face of that bend then the top of the leg the top face of the leg to the bottom side of the barking yes and that mat is all set now as usual your welding would be right here and right here you can also do some little weld here and here you'll be sure that since there is the backing the welding won't appear on the top of the stand okay so yes there goes our leg was wondering what's going on i can't see it so you go to the right plane and mirror components and the component to mirror is the leg that's pretty nice then uh, you go to the right plane and mirror components component to mirror is mirror component one there you go your stand is taking shape go ahead and save it save hall and save it as pp three oven stand oven stand now let's go ahead and create the the undershelf and the undershelf if we evaluate get our tape measure from this face to this face here is 720 and uh, from this face sorry evaluate from this face 
to this phase is 920 the normal distance is 920 so we go to file new part click ok go to the top plane new sketch center rectangle and uh, this is 920 we do it at 918 918 we'll see if doesn't fit well we are going to edit the sketch 718 and sheet metal base flange 1.5 1.2 this you can do 1.2 millimeter will be pretty much good for you because ideally the undershelf won't be carrying a lot of weight so we create edge flange and this edge edge flange you make them make a bend of 30 millimeter 25 is still ideal but 25 will look a little bit small it won't look neat so 30 millimeter is good then edge flange again the 15 millimeter so we should have done something before doing all this we notch for the legs anyway we are going to notch it we'll just create the notch this is 15 millimeter 15 mil right click then you go to the top side create new sketch and our new sketch we need <coughs> this will give us all sorts of issues right because it won't the, the the sketch it will give us troubles okay so let us go back to our base flange and edit that sketch normal so we create a corner rectangle corner rectangle right there then we create a construction line the center it will help us mirror this right angle rectangle that we have created and another one there this center line let us extend it a little bit and this line and this line we make them equal and we make them for 41 41 because the leg is 42 again you, because the leg is 40 you don't want to struggle you have to give it some little allowance and again you don't need to give it a big allowance for mm -hmm. yes so this line we want to mirror it about uh, not line 12 we are supposed to mirror it about line 12 that's okay then this line don't think there is any arm with mirroring also the the construction lines we mirror it about that line that's okay then we trim trim that trim this trim this and trim that we have created ourselves some issues here but we will sort them out that's okay let us ensure that our our dimensions have not changed that's good and this to this that's good and there is one line we have not trimmed this line here that's about that let's see whether we are good yes we are good right we are good I was saying this notch don't make it small as in 40 by 40 the leg you are going to struggle in certain it right and don't make it so big because you don't intend 
to do well in here between this this edge here and uh, the face of the legs okay so one millimeter is ideal save this as part number three and call it pp3 under shelf and shelf good so we continue with our assembly remember this is my way of doing my drawings once i have two three parts i start my assembly and continuing do the assembly as i i create a part i do assembly i don't know why um, you you don't necessarily have to do things the way i do mine so as long as you know what you're doing and if you don't don't worry you can do the way i do mine as you learn others okay yeah we are meeting the the undershelf to the top to the stand to the oven stand and this front plane and the front plane of the top there you go then you met it at a distance of 100 millimeter from the bottom of the leg from this top to the this bottom it's 100 millimeter look at it running on the lower direction you change direction where do we change direction you change direction no it is not supposed to do that why did it flip it is not supposed to flip so let us undo that it wasn't supposed to do that mm -hmm. okay this being the leg was 620 and we want it to be 6 to be 100 so we can do from this top where uh, here we do it at 520 520 I don't want it to flip in between that face and this yes this becomes a hundred yes let's see you see the notch you don't need a big notch to leave a big gap because you don't intend to do welding here your welding should be just here your welding should be here and here and probably here okay because it is pretty hard to polish here and as you can see the 719 we headed this and do it at 720 the base flange we edit the base flange and make it 920 that two millimeter is not doing us justice by 720 keep telling you if this was AutoCAD, then I don't know. It's the beauty of SolidWorks. You can edit the initial sketch and the thing adjusts itself. Yes, now you see it is fitting pretty well. And the gap, do we have a big gap? We don't have, we hardly have a gap. Uh, this side, this side and this side are different. Why? Where is the difference coming? Why are we having different faces? And yet... Mm, that 718... We can... Minus one millimeter. We edit this and do it at 919 against 
719. It is far much better you do as many changes as you want on the drawing other than you know doing the cutting and the notching and the bending and when you start fitting you realize your undershelf is either small or big see it kind of flashes pretty well there when you do your notch your your, your welding it will sit well right <coughs> so that looks good to me okay now as you can see we have a 25 by 25 two members here one on this side and one on the other side for holding the the runners okay so we we create a, a, a square tube there of 20 by 25 by 25 so new part click ok center rectangle new sketch mm -hmm. center rectangle here and we give it 25 by 25 dimension it 25 by 25 yes and uh, same drill we offset by 1.2 reverse direction that's okay feature extrude extrude and direction you can and condition you can keep it as blind and extrude by what 520 520 or 5 5 518 5 518 just in case just in case you have yes you have your tube save it as part number four and call it pp3 what do we call this part mid till are we going to call it 25 by 25 shs new part click ok and uh, this we are going to do top plane new sketch center rectangle the length is 720 720 and uh, by 30 millimeter 30 millimeter you go to shape metal base flange the runners 1.2 1.5 most of the time this we normally use the off cuts from like the top what off cut you are going to get from the top you do the runners with it then another edge flange here of 15 millimeter and your runner is good now do fillet you do fillet of say two three millimeter three millim two millimeter do it on this edge you don't want this edge to be sharp and uh, at the back it is not necessary because there will be the stopper but since oh, we are going to turn this thing around it, it is important we have that fillet right this is for safety you don't want a sharp edge here uh, right then save it as part number five pp3 rails or runners okay we insert component and the component is rail Okay, we met this face here flashes with this face. Like okay, this face and this face. 
click OK and as you can see this the distance from the undershare of to the bottom of the rail is 108 106 108 there so do it at a hand actually do it 105 to warn that be, there will be no harm that is between that the top of the undershelf and the bottom of the rail that's good and we save this we insert component again rail I'm going to rotate it on the y axis that's good met component then I met this and this that's okay What happened? No, I shouldn't have done that. This face to this face, then this face flashes with this face. Click OK, then this top should be horizontal to this top that's pretty much good yeah the reason why I did that is because if you mirror this it will the, the top this upstand when you mirror it going to this other side it will be on the lower side and not on the upper side you can do it and see so in insert component and component to insert here is uh, is 20 by 25 by 25 tube like met component this face and this face are flashing uh, let us offset it slightly and uh, the bottom of the square tube sits on the under shelf from the top of the under shelf then you go for the front plane the right plane of the top and the right plane of the square tube right plane of the square tube so that the square tube might be at the center and that's pretty good now you can go ahead and mirror that uh, the front plane mirror component component to mirror right click there you are so with this you are going to do your welding right here on the front no welding on the sides okay no welding on the sides then up here you're going to do your welding right here and you can do it on the back in the on the top backing you do your welding here you do your welding on this side and the other side right and your square tube will be sitting pretty i want to insert another component not another component but another rail right open and this time around it is at the middle net this face flashes with this face and uh, this sits on this that's right this and this they are on the same horizontal line and that's pretty much good now what is left to do we mirror this let's see whether if we mirror there will be issues those issues that i have been telling you about let us wait and see whether they will arise we mirror it on the right side of the square tube mirror components component to mirror this is the component it is sitting well it is sitting well right so there you go you have your rails we need to do a linear 
pattern on that direction on that uh, direction one we are doing only one direction that one you can change direction because we are going on the top what is the distance 0 0.105 how many do we want four components today to mirror that one this one this one and this one the fourth rail seems to be too close to the upper side but i think that is okay yeah your hoven stand is coming save it look at the photo can you see it can you see it right here and then we have a stopper behind there because as it as it looks it doesn't have a front or a back if you put your tray and you push it it will go all the way through and uh, you might have whatever it is that you were baking falling on the other side so you need to incorporate some stoppers behind there so we go to file new part okay front plane new sketch center rectangle dimension it smart dimension this we saw is 520 518 520 and this should be 25 mil sheet metal base mm -hmm. that's okay then you do edge flange edge flange you just make a small kink here of say 10 millimeter and uh, the degree 30 just a small kink see there you go then you save it as part number six and call it pp3 stopper then also use okay let us insert it so that we may save we may save us for the middle one insert component stopper there you go met met this edge met with this edge that's good actually you can leave it at, at that you can just leave it at that because when that is exactly what will happen because you are going to weld right around here it should just go below the undershelf slightly below the undershelf and you weld here really that this is just a stopper and we go to the right plane right plane mirror components you realize I'm using the right plane of that square tube because it is at the dead center of the top and the stopper of the other side is intact right so we go to stopper and we save it as save as copy and open and we will call it as 6a 6a pp3 mid st stopper sorry mid stopper then we edit the base flange sketch and make it 50 because it will be stopping on either side of the divide then we go back to our assembly and we insert component mid stopper mid stopper is the component to insert met you can take 
this face and met it with this face. That's okay. Then you go for the the front plane, the right plane, and the right plane of the mid stopper. Right plane of the mid stopper. I'm sure that is good. We have three degrees of freedom, but sometimes out of necessity. Yeah, so your 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 stand is done. Actually, the only thing that is remaining with this stand is to insert grommets. Grommets and some of these other things, we will be doing them as part of just tutorials, right? Now, a standard tray is always 600 and between 610, 620, 610, 605, and 405. So let us evaluate and see whether we are going to have enough space for a tray here. Between that and that, no more distance is four or five. So ideally, you have enough space for your tray. And again, you don't want you don't want it to be very tight. So should you find that whatever tray you are using is bigger than four hundred, between four hundred and four ten, make this square tube twenty by twenty. Okay, let us do that. Instead of doing a 25 by 25, because there is no weight that it will be carrying, you edit that sketch. Sorry. Edit sketch and make it 20. 20 by 20. 20 by 20, you're going to have enough space for your tray. You know, you are not fabricating things that will give your clients or the end user issues. You know, they have an oven stand, but they can't slide their trays in there. Let us evaluate and see the distance from that to that comes to five or four or seven which is good. Close that. I'm recording my thing. Close the door. <laughs> so we evaluate again and s but as of now you know between here and uh, where the stopper is is 720 and the tray is ideally 620. So it won't be protruding. You will have enough space. Your tray will be somewhere in here. All right. Let us insert grommets. I had uh, I had drawn grommets someplace. Do we have a forty by forty grommet? Where do we have them? Yeah, 40 by 40 grommet is here. Uh, open. Rubber adjustable uh, grommet. Met. Uh -huh. This face mets with this face. You can go ahead and do the... Click OK. This face to the inner face of the square tube. You can use the planes if you want, then this and this. Yeah, it is far much easier. We, can we mirror components? We mirror them against which plane? Right plane, mirror components, component to mirror, grommet. Then we go f for the top. We do that. Top, top. Where is the top? Or under shelf. We go for the front plane. 
mirror components component to mirror this and this right click there our stand is ready you can go ahead save save as parts all these parts you get your dxf flat patterns and all that uh, for the purposes of cutting then you follow the tips while doing the assembly this the rails you are welding here only here probably hunter here if you wonder but here and not full weld just a two millimeter uh, two millimeter tack here two millimeter tack here maybe two millimeter tack under there what you're trying to avoid is to have so many cleaning and polishing or applying pickling paste no you try much as you can to avoid that all right at the top there will be welding there at the corners and these corners they have never had any issue with polishing they normally come out clean so guys thanks so much for your time that is it for today we will see you next time can we take a sneak peek of what we will be doing next yeah what we will be doing next is this hand wash basin and this hand wash basin is similar to another hand wash to this hand wash basin and any other hand wash basin which we might be requiring all right so Thanks so much for your time. You guys have a lovely weekend.